covering your hometown. From five newsrooms across the region, this is WDBJ7. A winter storm coats many of our hometowns in snow. You gotta get in touch with your inner 12 year old. Friends made memories racing down hills, while others found ways to keep neighbors safe out on slick roads. It just speaks volumes to me. The main event might be over, but the impacts will linger into the coming days. WDBJ 7's News at 11 starts now. Good evening, I'm Kate Capitano. Thank you for joining us. A thick layer of snow paints many of our hometowns white tonight. Many areas won't see any more snowfall this evening, but we are going to continue to feel impacts from this winter weather event. The snowblowers were out in full force in downtown Roanoke today. Folks were busy clearing those roads and walkways with plows pushing the snow into piles and putting down extra layers of salt. There were no major traffic crashes in our area. However, there were a few incidents like this. You can see a tractor trailer appears to have slid into a guardrail along Interstate 64 near the Rockbridge and Allegheny County line. A live look at Interstate 81 shows things relatively quiet and moving smoothly out there, but those roads are still wet and could become dangerous overnight. We have a live team coverage this evening from Lynchburg down to Henry County. WDBJ 7's Michael Lachnowitz, Kendall Davis and Lindsey Kane are all out giving us a look at conditions tonight. But first, we're going to check in with our team of meteorologists. So Brett and Ian, do we need to worry about a refreeze on those roadways this evening? That's certainly looking like a possibility, Kate. Temperatures already are below freezing for a number of areas. So with some fog in the air, fog touching everything and causing that refreeze, of course, and also the snow melt from the day, any of that on the roads, it's going to refreeze. So with that and a possibility of a little bit of a freezing drizzle, the National Weather Service has definitely uh, taken uh, precautions and has issued a winter weather advisory. This is, has nothing to do with the snow that we saw uh, this morning. This is completely separate. So we have that possibility of seeing some icy conditions into tomorrow morning along and west of the Blue Ridge where we are, we have a best, better chance of seeing some of that freezing drizzle and freezing rain. But looking at Blacksburg and Roanoke, the cameras currently, it is quiet. We had a little bit more fogginess going on in Roanoke, that mistiness as well, and temperatures flirting with freezing. And visibility currently right, down, right now down to one mile in Roanoke. We're down to a half mile or less in Galax, the Grayson Highlands. That's one of those areas we're going to have to watch for that possibility of some icing. And it does look like this will continue into tomorrow morning with that winter weather advisory until 7 in the morning and this cold air well it's going to stick around brent we have plenty of cold air to come and some winds on the way early this week yeah that's the, going to be the next story in is uh, that cold air the wind makes it come back that snow's not going to go anywhere in a hurry we've got highs tomorrow only reaching the mid to upper 30s with the cloudy skies as you mentioned maybe a few brief periods of some uh, snow showers some freezing drizzle next couple days will stay cold only in the 30s that wind picking back up and any of that snow that does melt is going to refreeze at night. That's just the beginning of the cold air. It's going to be another active weekend that could get a little wintry. We'll take a closer look at that as well as what you can expect for your full work week forecast. You can keep up with the latest weather developments right in the palm of your hand by using our WDBJ7 weather app. Be sure to have those push alerts turned on so you can get breaking weather alerts first. In Roanoke, friends and families put on their hats and gloves and enjoyed a fun day in the snow. It was one of the first major snowfalls in a while, and folks say they are happy they could get outside. WDBJ 7's Lindsay Kane is live tonight. So, Lindsay, how are people taking advantage of this winter weather? Kate, some people were sledding the snow while others were working to remove it, but they all tell me they were just happy to be outside enjoying this snow while it lasts. Oh, we're too heavy for this thing. A snow day means sledding for these two friends. Sledding, enjoying all these people together. That's what it is. It's a ritual. What was that, three, four years old out here doing this? I was better back then than I am now. I'm actually scared of just getting hurt. <laughs> they came out to the slopes behind Monterey Elementary School in Roanoke, a popular spot for sledding, tubing, and even snowboarding. This is fun. The only bad part is walking up. We need like a lift here. And some people even took their sleds over to Elmwood Park. We woke up and saw snow covering the ground and still felt like good packing snow, good sledding snow. So we headed down to Elmwood Park, really great sledding hills down there. 
uh, you really get some solid air on there. Uh, I've hurt myself many times before and I already feel it. These friends say playing in the snow is the perfect way to celebrate a birthday. But yeah, just celebrating Sarah's birthday. Um, we all have the day off, which is a rarity. So I feel like you have to take advantage, especially with everything going on the past year. You know, we've been stuck inside. And that's exactly why Maisha Hibbert decided to get outdoors, not playing in the snow, but removing it from her driveway. I've been on maternity leave and cooped up in the house with the baby. So I use this opportunity to come outside. Conrad Huband has worked over 20 hours removing the snow for a landscaping company, but even he says he doesn't mind it. I love working in the snow. It's it's long hours, but it's it's rewarding. Very easy snow to remove. Uh, it was very dry at first. Uh, got wet as it warmed up. Whether playing or working in the snow, there's something about this white fluff that always seems to light people up. You gotta get in touch with your inner 12 year old. The snow isn't all just fun and games. It, of course, can be very dangerous for driving conditions. And VDOT says there is a chance that this snow will freeze overnight, which will make the roads really icy. So if you do have to drive tomorrow, just be extra cautious of the roads that may be icy. Of course, important reminders there. And it's just great to see so many people having fun, those big smiles as they go racing down those hills. Thanks so much, Lindsay Kane, live tonight in Roanoke. In Lynchburg, a half a dozen people in an off-road club took to the streets to give back to healthcare workers. WDBJ 7's Michael Lachnowitz is live. So, Michael, what are they doing to keep people safe on the roads? Kate, they offered free rides for healthcare workers who needed to get to work. And they got a very early start today, right around 4 this morning. An early Sunday morning snow turned Lynchburg white to close out January. Some folks made their way out to clean off their cars, while others turned to their neighbors for help. I'm just extremely grateful, you know, for, for people like this, you know, taking the time out of their day to do something good for somebody else. Dennis Murphy was one of many health care workers who reached out to Chris DeMond for help. While primary roads first saw plows Sunday, many secondary roads were not yet touched. Dumont says this made for an opportunity to give back to the health care community. Now, those folks have been working so hard over the last 12 months, especially the last three months. Uh, it, it was a way to sort of recognize them and help them out especially. So Dumond and a few others offered rides to health care staff who needed to get to work. Murphy works in a senior living community kitchen and says the residents need staff to be there for them every day, even during times of slick travel. These people are confined, you know, to the community. And, you know, I, I was pointed out that if we don't show up for work, they don't eat. The rides are free of charge and will run all day, and they mean a lot to those who need to safely traverse the roads. Seeing people out here, you know, looking out for the community, helping out in times like this, weather like this, you know, it just, it just speaks volumes to me. Dumont said folks did have to wear a mask while riding, but noted many passengers were already vaccinated. Kate? I'm sure that is such a great service and a great way to relieve some of that stress that so many people were probably feeling this morning when they realized how slick those roads were. Thanks so much, Michael Lachnowitz tonight. Neighbors in Henry County and Martinsville woke up to snow and slush on the roads this morning, but most of that has melted away. WDBJ 7's Kendall Davis is live in Henry County tonight. So Kendall, how are things looking in Southside right now? So Kate, right now it just started raining just a couple of minutes ago and I'm right here off the Dick and Rilly Trail. But the roads are still pretty much clear at this point and this snow that you see right here behind me, it was fluffy earlier in the day and now it just pretty much feels like ice and is a bit hard to pick up. But as I said, Henry County Public Safety has not had much issues on the road today and there have been, uh, there have not been many power outages in the county or the city. Now, organizers with the Martinsville Henry County Warming Center, they had actually closed the actual center down today in fear that their volunteers would not be able to make it in safely. So they went to their second resort, which is to put homeless folks into hotels, and they reached out to people on Facebook to ask for donations, and they actually received $400 in just a matter of a day to put five families in a hotel for the next three nights, giving them a peace of mind. So for them to know that they can call our helpline, they know that we're going to answer and that we're going to be able to help them in some way. Um, I mean, that's the difference between life and death, essentially. 
Now, again, like I said earlier, it just started raining a few minutes ago, but uh, the good thing is this does feel just like rain. It's, it's not necessarily any sleet or anything coming down right now. Kate, uh, we will continue to keep an eye on the roads down here, but public safety, again, wants to remind folks to be careful if you get out here on the roads and always pay attention uh, to slick spots and to be safe when you're out. Yes, stay safe and take it slow if you do have to be out there tonight. Thanks so much, Kendall Davis and Henry County. All right, and as we take a look, Virginia's Department of Transportation is asking people to be careful behind the wheel and stay home if you can. Crews are still working to clear secondary roads and neighborhoods like these. They say they're worried about a refreeze overnight that will make clearing these roadways a little more challenging and dangerous for drivers. Pavement temperatures are still low at this time, uh, and our temperatures in the air will get colder tonight as well. So uh, if you're having to go out in the morning, you really do want to be careful. Uh, use some extra caution. VDOT is also asking everyone to clear off all that snow and ice on their cars before they drive anywhere in the coming days. Many schools and businesses and organizations are announcing closings and delays for tomorrow. So be sure to check out our closings page on our website, WDVJ7.com, for the latest information. Virginia State Police say they've responded to hundreds of crashes and disabled vehicles during today's winter storm. This is a snapshot from one of those incidents on I-95 in Hanover County. According to troopers, there have been 362 traffic crashes as of 9 this evening. One of those crashes is making headlines tonight and it involved a fire truck in Henrico County. Kelly Avellino has more details. The Richmond area and its surrounding counties have gotten anywhere from two to over four inches of snow, and you can certainly see the impact on the roads here. They are very slushy. Crews have been out since early this morning and the night before, spreading salt and sand and plowing. Virginia State Police has responded to over 60 crashes in our area alone, and there was a serious accident involving a fire truck here in Henrico. The truck overturned earlier this morning when it was rushing to a call. Four firefighters had to be transported to the hospital, but thankfully we're told their injuries are not serious. Right now, the snow is changing over to rain. The temperatures through the evening and overnight are supposed to stay just above freezing, but again, there is still the chance of ice and sleet, and that's all going to mix with what is already on the roads now. So certainly a very precarious situation for drivers. People are being asked to stay home if you don't have to go anywhere. In Henrico, I'm Kelly Avellino. At JMU, some students woke up early to have fun in the snow today. Seeing everyone come together, being able to enjoy it, and, you know, not be cooped up in our dorms, mm -hmm. you know. All the time. Yeah, it's a good way to connect. Students were out and about on the quad today, many having snowball fights, building snowmen, and just having a great time in that fresh powder. Kind of relieves the stress of the new semester. Like, we kind of just are able to have fun and kind of forget about it for a little bit. Especially, I haven't seen a snow like this in years, too. Mm -hmm. Many students moved back onto campus this weekend. It was a warm and snowy welcome back to the friendly city. And before we go to break, we want to take a look at some of those creative snow creations in our hometowns. An alligator was creeping around in the snow in Leanna Smith's neighborhood. Jackie Thomas found Snoopy, but looks like Woodstock was enjoying the winter weather somewhere else. There was a pirate with some treasures near Lori Stevens' home. And just take a look at this octopus sent in to us from Huff. Thanks for getting all these photos of these snow creatures. We're going to be back with more news and weather after this break. The Wythe County Sheriff's Office is investigating a potential threat to the community. The Sheriff's Office says the potential threat was posted on a social media platform. Investigators believe it was posted by a student from Wythe County Public Schools. Deputies say the school district has been notified and they are continuing to investigate. No other information has been provided at this time. An unusual crash in Botetourt County damaged a tractor trailer yesterday along Interstate 81. The Troutville Volunteer Fire Department says a turkey smashed through the windshield of this truck Saturday morning. One of the responders on scene says the bird somehow missed the driver and ended up inside the car still alive. The driver was able to pull to the side of the road safely. That turkey did have serious injuries and was put down by animal control. 
2,500 new coronavirus cases were reported this morning in the Commonwealth. That pushes the total to nearly 505,000 infections. 11.8% of tests are coming back positive. And as of today, VDH says more than 117,000 people are fully vaccinated against the virus. For the first time in almost two months, less than 100,000 Americans are hospitalized with COVID-19, but January has proven to be the deadliest month in America's COVID crisis. Lilia Luciano tells us more than 94,000 people have died this month. Southern California's massive vaccine efforts picked up speed today as lines of people crowded super sites. Shortages, second shot anxiety, and even a protest at Dodger Stadium staged by anti-vaxxers that temporarily stopped shots have left many frustrated. Just 6.8% of all Californians have received a dose. It's terrible, it's rough, it's exhausting on all of us because I'd like to have a million doses in our freezer. LA County has the highest death toll of any county in the U.S. COVID deaths here among Latinos have increased 1,000% since November. Still, nationally, they are less likely to get vaccinated. There's education, there's communication, and there is a language barrier. The push is on to reach those communities of color. They're like, someone who looks like me and understands me can help me. An Associated Press study of 17 states and two cities found that black Americans are also vaccinated at far lower rates than white Americans. I am excited that I got my first one. The need to protect vulnerable populations even more urgent now with three new variants detected in more than 30 states. Former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb telling Face the Nation there's new fears of regional epidemics. Now the risk is to the fall when you know these new variants are going to want to surge. This week, Johnson & Johnson is set to ask the FDA for emergency authorization for its new single-shot vaccine. Until then, Americans can't roll up their sleeves fast enough. We were anxious to hurry up and get the shot. California's COVID vaccination rate still lags behind other states, but today's numbers also show that both cases and hospitalizations are coming down. And this new federal mask mandate for public transit can only help. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Los Angeles.